Josh, what's up, man? Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, so good to see you, bro. It's good I'm to glad, see you. Man, I'm glad that we get to talk. And, uh, you know, as a worship leader, I've been impacted by the songs that you've written, Stand in Your Love, Evidence. I'm sure worship leaders who are watching this also oh. have been impacted. And, um, man, I remember seeing you, the first time I've ever seen you play live was at the Dove Awards in 2019. Wow, and, yeah. Uh, it's funny you won't you won't know this but i was sitting like right in front of you like so you were on that little right. stage that was kind yeah. of out in the crowd and okay, we were yeah. in the row right in front of you were um, you right there with um i know the guys from uh sanctus real were like right there they were right down yeah they were right down from us just okay. a few people we were i just remember with... locking eyes with them and i was like oh i know them and i was yeah. so nervous i was like Okay, I'm just yeah. gonna look at these guys. <laughs> yeah, Matt Hammett. Don't spit on them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were sitting yeah. right next with the E1 people as well. And uh, okay. anyways, the dub boards are always just such a fun time, especially yeah. if you're down on the floor, because you get to kind of just see all these people who are, you know, writing worship music and producing music. Yeah. And But it was cool to watch you perform that song. And uh, I believe you just did it acoustic, right? It was just yeah. acoustic. It's just it me awesome. and my actually my buddy uh scott mills who um oh yeah play, plays electric he plays with a band called colony house but just one yeah. of my buddy i was like do you want to come play with me we're just going to do a little acoustic vert which was so nice because he's a you know he's he's been in nashville for a long time and he's an old pro and so yeah he's not old he's younger than me but he's been doing this longer than me so he it was nice yeah. to have him because he settled my nerves and just yeah it'd be great so do you remember was, if you guys played with a click we that? did we we had a click we had um we had some tracks and really well yeah because the, you know they wanted yeah. it it was it was you know the shortened version yeah and it was timed out and, for the show yeah just me and scotty and so but they were like you know maybe we'll add some tracks in and like i think they kept like you know some yeah. of the gang vocals and maybe a little bit of percussive stuff just to fill it up a little bit but yeah. um yeah so it was and i was terrified that they weren't gonna like I think that was my yeah second. It was my first them. time ever at the Dove Awards. Yeah, and so I was just right. like, oh, is, how is it gonna? Yeah. Are they gonna hit play? What's gonna happen? Who's doing yeah. these tracks? I'm just up here, I just know. me and Scott. So it was great. So it was. Great. It is someone like in that. the backstage that's actually running the tracks. You just plug in your in ears and like hope that you someone's gonna press play in Ableton. Yeah. And I'm just, and especially being out there in the on the B stage in the middle yeah. of it, you just feel so naked just out yeah. there. That would and, be um, so unreal. Yeah, I guess the guy at the at the board front of house or monitor world, I don't know, was yeah. the one hitting the tracks and yeah. It worked out. We didn't mess up. It went it went well. <laughs> Is it pretty nerve-wracking to play at the Dove Awards? Does yes. It, feel high it was for me. I mean, that's the one that's the only time I've ever done it. And that was my first Dove Awards ever. I never had been to the Dove Awards. And so and it was like a special, you know, it was the 50th anniversary. Yeah. And um, so I was already just nervous. And then I remember me and Scotty, we, I don't know if we just didn't leave our seat in time to get around to where we needed to go, but we had to yeah. leave our seat, go around and we had to, you know, run all the way around the arena. Grab, I had to go grab my guitar out of the dress. Yeah. Just, I remember we were like thinking, oh my gosh, we're not going to make it in time. Yeah. And my fear was like, they're going to cut to me. Yeah. And I'm not going to be up there on stage. So and you're I was like just, running up, plugging oh, in. Oh, yeah. And, I'm running, yeah. plugging in. And I was so stressed. But then once I got there, we plugged in. I was like, okay, I know how to. Yeah. I've sang the song a million times already yeah. then. So yeah. I'm like, I'm fine now. Once yeah. it's go time, right. I'm okay. But yeah. yeah. And fun. you played Stand in Your Love. Tell us just a little bit about that song. And I mean, that song just took off, blew up. What was it like? Yeah. Wait, with tell us a little bit about that song what was it like to have so, an impact oh on gosh. so many people with that? um i mean it was amazing and it, it was i think um when i think about just how it was written and it all just kind of happened on i was um i went on, i went on a trip to dallas with a worship leader buddy of mine and i was just down there honestly helping he had just broken his leg or broken his ankle a few months before or a month before and punctured a lung and so oh he God. was he was on crutches and then didn't know how much he'd even be able to sing. So he's like, do you want to come with me and like yeah. help me carry things and then lead worship <laughs> with me? And so I was like, yeah, sure. So I went down there just to help him. 
and then yeah. ended up I stayed a day later just to write with uh some of the gateway guys Mark Harris and Rita Springer yeah. and um and so I was literally just there for that and we wrote Stand Your Love that day and and I and it was kind of going to be for like gateway was going to do it yeah. and then we were working on an album Bethel Music at the time Victory album and it just kind of like last minute made that album and yeah. I, it felt like I knew it was a special song. Like it, it felt yeah. special. I remember we just even sending the, the, the rough, you know, voice memo version of it. Yeah. It, there was something on it, but I mean, you know, I didn't know it was going to take, you know, we, I just thought this will be a great yeah. worship song for our church and, you know, it gets to be on this album. I'm just so honored to even just be where I am right now. And then, um, you know, and then from there we, they, we decided, okay, it's going to be the lead single from this album and we're going to push it to radio, which I had never been on radio, never done yeah. anything like that. And yeah. Um, so yeah, that was when it just like started taking off was the radio thing, which just blew my mind. And that's, yeah. I was going to ask you when you're in a write and you're writing songs, do you pretty quickly know like, wow, this is a special song. And you kind of answered that, but I'm yeah. curious, like when you're actually writing it or you're like, Oh my gosh, like this is it. Like this is going to yeah. be huge. I mean, I think so. I think I, I say I think so because I think there's been times when I've really thought it was special and it was like, you know, it was yeah. fine. It was, it's yeah. a good song. But yeah. maybe in the moment, I'm like, I'm such a feeler that yeah. sometimes my feelings can mislead me. Um, yeah. But uh, I definitely think the ones like, like Stand in Your Love, um, Evidence, there's been a handful of others that maybe weren't as known as those, but they've been special. I've led them a lot. And yeah, I've definitely know when those have been written, I can feel like, okay, this is something that yep. it, it, whether it came fast, like standing in love or um, some of them came like, and it was just like months of just me knowing how special that song is and knowing that I need to like work through and really yeah. grind to, to get this where I feel like it needs to be. Um, because it feels special um yeah yeah i think i think i initially kind of know but then there's also been songs where i didn't know how good they were i i liked them but i wasn't sure if it would work or not and then maybe they end up like really taking off in our church uh yeah. just really you know so yeah yeah there's I, ones yeah. that surprise you yeah totally and there's yeah i've had songs where it was just a really sweet song that I was proud of and I love, and I was got, glad it got to be on my album. Yeah. And then, you know, fast forward five years later, I'm still leading those, that song, like as much as any of the other ones. And I'm like, right. wow, that I didn't think, I thought this was just going to be, you know, a sleeper song yeah. on the album. Yeah. And, but um, yeah, you never know sometimes. So let's rewind the clock a bit and just give worship leaders a little bit of the story of how you even started leading worship. Like who taught you, okay, yeah. who inspired you when you first started? Well, I, um, I grew up in North Carolina. I grew up in North Carolina representing my Panthers today. <laughs> yeah, We finally won. So, um, I, I grew up a little church in North Carolina. My dad was as a pastor, but he was also the worship pastor. And so I, I actually got my start just playing drums with him. I remember, I think I started playing drums in our little church when I was like 12, 13 years old. That's and cool. uh, so that's, my dad's a big influence as far as like, just, I mean, for the first, um, you know, 18 years of my life, night, he was my pastor and also yeah. my worship pastor. And just my dad wrote songs and, and still write songs. And so I just, I grew up in that. And, and I remember when I was in, um, I was in high school. I was in youth group. Our youth pastor said we didn't have anybody that led worship in our youth group. We would just play CDs back then and just play, you know, worship yeah. CD. I remember I'm old enough to, this is like the mid nineties. I remember we would play Pre Petra praise. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Petra play praise too. some of those, mm -hmm. you know, take the cold, cleanse my lips. Yeah. yeah. My uh, first concert ever was a Petra concert. Really? Yeah, they played that song. Yeah. <laughs> We are dating ourselves now, but um, Big time. most of my friends have no idea who Petra is. Um, but we were just listening to those, and I remember my youth my youth pastor saying, "You should be leading worship." And I'm like, "Why? I just play drums." And yeah. he's like, "No, I feel like, you know, you're you're got it in you. Your dad leads worship. He plays acoustic, and and my dad plays piano too. And he's like, "Why don't you just 
learn how to play the acoustic and learn some songs. And so I remember he actually, it's funny enough, my dad never like wanted to push things on me that he didn't want. Yeah. Me, he wanted me just to find it on my own and didn't want me to feel like he, you know, I was trying to be like him just for the sake yeah. of that. Even though he wanted me to really do it and really do music. And, but um, yeah. my room was my youth pastor who barely knew guitar. He's the one that taught me like a, the, my first, like three chords on a guitar on acoustic and yep. I just I grabbed it and started leading and it, there was something about it that that felt natural to me and I think a lot of it was I'd grown up in it with my dad but also even just playing drums like I just knew the ebbs and flows of worship and and, and had learned even how to lead from the drums you know I mean I think a lot yeah. of times the drummer in some cases can lead the worship maybe even or has maybe a more yeah. of a reign yeah. on, on how worship can go and how yeah. music can go as, as much the as the bus any. driver in a way. You're right. Yeah. And so yeah. totally. And so I it, think in some of that, it, it, I, I felt comfortable in a sense, like just out of the yeah. gate, like leading because I'd been in it. And so yeah. that's kind of how I got my start, but then heavily influenced by like delirious Martin Smith yeah. and, and, um, gosh, uh, Oh, there was another, no, there a lot of Matt Redman and you know, a lot yeah. of those guys. So there's nothing like that original Delirious album. Um, oh, cutting the edge, cutting the cutting edge, edge yeah. albums. Oh, oh my gosh. I love them. That's they how, that's so what good. I first, that's what got me going too. Cause I was like, oh man, these songs are so, so cool. At the time, there was nothing like that. No, no, there was nothing. I think the fact that they were, um, they were very, you know, corporate songs that you could do at a yeah. church, but also, they were so personal. I mean, Martin kind of like yeah. opened the door for like, hey, you can write a song that's kind of about your personal walk, but yeah. make it corporate enough that everyone can grab hold of this. And yeah. and then the Live in the Can album where it was like, that was the first time my eyes opened up to like, you can, I can just go off the page and just into yeah. the spontaneous worship. And they just like recorded it and they put it out. And that was yeah. so foreign back then to just have you know spontaneous times in worship that are just on an yeah. album that you can listen to yeah that's great well it's cool to hear your story that's it's very similar to mine actually I have, my dad's a pastor and grew up leading worship in church youth group and you know what's interesting is that there's always just one person that ends up really encouraging someone to be like hey you should try this and you're a totally. kid you know you're like i don't know if i can do this but someone's like no i see it in you and i'm gonna like push you in a way to do it and yeah. look at, it like changed your whole life yeah. And it, it just did. takes like that one person to light that spark. Yeah. And it's so funny. I to, And I think it's so funny how like you would think on paper, it'd be like my father and yeah. he definitely poured into me, but like there's sometimes it you almost don't hear it from your family as well. You need somebody yeah. from the outside, like speaking in because, yeah. um, you know, I, I know that even with my kids now, sometimes We'll yep. be around and I'm like one of my buddies said something about my kid. I'm like, will you go tell him that? Tell go tell my daughter. <laughs> like right. they would love I I think sometimes you hear it better from outside. Uh, yep. So outside tell tell us a little bit then how so at some point in your journey, you got connected yeah. to the people at Bethel. How did that yeah. happen? Um, that happened. So I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I was a part of a ministry there in Charlotte, uh, called Morning Star, and they um for years had kind of been um, just very, very connected with Bethel. A lot of people from Bethel, Bill Johnson and would come out yeah. to, to conferences that we did and, um, and Brian and Jen would come out and then a lot of our people would come go out there. So we just kind of had this, you know, this two coast meeting together. Yeah. A lot of, and, um, and that's how I met Brian and Jen. Um, they, I think it was 2007. I met them and just had this relationship with them for about six or seven years of, meeting up here and there um yeah at different conferences and um you know i would have i'd do an album i'd send it to all my friends and they're the, one of my friends that i'd send it to so they were always connected with us and then yeah uh, around 2014 um i had just released a, my a little independent album called rivers and i they got a hold of it i think that bethel started singing my song praises at their church and just which got me even more connected with them. So I went out there and I'd led every once in a while. Well, I went out there in 2014 to lead worship and visit my friends. And uh, that was when I led worship one Sunday night at Bethel. And that was when Brian, they met with and it's like, Hey, we'd love for you to be a part. They would just started to really do the, um, 
the belt like the collective and it was yeah, the more yeah the art like more before that had just been mostly just bethel music was like right. the worship leaders there at bethel and um and then they had got the helsers had come out jonathan melissa which i had grown up with we all went to the same ministry school in charlotte yeah so i mean i used to play drums with johnny um and then i came a month later and so me and the helsers were kind of like the first artist outside of bethel that they pulled in for bethel music so that's how it happened 2014 was when i officially joined and gosh it's crazy it's been eight years I, we we ended up moving out there in 2015 a year later we just decided to move yeah. out and be a part of the church so you live in reading right now i don't live in reading right now <laughs> I, okay we were we, we were there for six years okay and, um and then in january 2021 we moved to uh to franklin tennessee so oh. just outside of nashville i wonder why why would you be in franklin yeah, no everybody's I know. there <laughs> i was you know just, what i, well, I was, I was just, just in franklin I, a couple weeks ago because i'm thinking about okay. moving there where okay where are you well i'm in chicago okay but right. um but you know i we're always doing stuff in the christian music space and I don't right. know, franklin just seems like that's where it's at that's where it's it at, makes so. sense I mean, yeah. you know, after Stand in Your Love and then when the radio and all that started, pick, I was coming through Franklin and Nashville all the time so much. And then yeah. um, we just, I think we always thought we probably would end up here. Yeah. But 2020 happened. We're just, all of all that that was, I think, just kind of uh, accelerated everyone's yeah. vision for the next two or three years. And so part of that was like, we just wanted to get closer to family. Yeah. We, um we wanted traveling to be a little bit easier. And then I was always here anyway. So it just made sense. And um, yeah. so we've been here a year and a half and it's been great. And I'm still very connected at Bethel. I still go back and lead often. And um, I was just there last week and it's been great. We loved our time in Red I mean, Reading is a really special place. It's, it's yeah. it, that I, I miss Bethel church being my every Sunday morning church. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I miss Bill being my pastor. But, yeah, um, but I still, it still feels like they are. They're still very right. connected. But what church are you going to in Nashville? We've been going to the Belonging. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. We awesome. Um, we had so many friends that we already connected with that go there, and then um, and yeah. I love Henry and Alex. I would met them a little before, and so uh, we kind of just you know, we, it's like we we didn't know. It's honestly, it's been weird. It's the first time in my life that I've ever moved somewhere and it not been like because of the church in that yeah. city, you know, I've yeah. growing up, my dad's a pastor anywhere we moved is because of his job. Yep. And then when I became a worship pastor, anywhere I moved was because of the church moving out to Reading was because of Bethel. So then moving here, it was like, I don't know how to find a church. Like, what do you do? Like, yeah. Yeah. It, and it felt so it was just, well, I know the most people here. I love Henry and Alex and just, yeah. You know, initially, just I, you know, really feel like they, um, yeah, we shared DNA in a sense with them. So we just started going, and, and we love it. It's been great. I've recently been meeting a lot of people who go there, just because yeah. we've been looking at moving down there, and then also I've got yeah. I'm actually working on a music project myself right now with a guy named McKendry Tucker who goes to McKendry. Co. Yeah, 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 yeah. He played. He plays keys. Yeah, yeah, plays okay. keys. Yep. Yeah, and he's producing he's, um, this project for me, and he's told me a ton of stuff about the belonging in it. It just sounds like a great place. It's a great place. And we love, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty close with Cody and uh, yeah. Cody Carnes. We actually just played golf. And, oh, cool. Um, so he's there. He's there. And yeah. he's our, my initial, like, you should come. So, yeah, yeah that's awesome. We love it. So you've got a new album coming out. October I do. October 21st, Where the Glory yeah. Is. Tell us about it. Oh, man. I, um, I love this. I'm so pumped about it. It's been, uh, I mean, I, I feel like it's like my best 10, 11 songs that I've been a part of. And it's, uh, it, it kind of, I went from like thinking I was going to write an album and it be, um, a little more singer songwriter and just maybe a little more, um, front porch worship Josh kind of thing to, there is definitely some of that, but it ended up being way a lot more corporate songs than i thought i would yeah. a lot more corporate worship and they still feel like me they still feel like you know it's definitely i can't get away from like my sound that tends yeah. to gravitate towards that carolina country sound yeah yeah but um but it it um 
I think it's just it's a it's a group of songs that feel um they just feel like the most me. I don't know how to explain mm-hmm. that even more than just I've had friends of mine that I've known for years that have listened to it and I haven't said anything to them about, you know, yeah. what it was like or anything. And they just come back and most of them are like, This feels like the most the truest form of you that I've ever heard. And yeah. and I feel like that that's it feels like that to me. It's just um where the glory is the song. It's it's um I wrote it with my buddy David Leonard and um it's one of those songs that I think when I hear when I first we started talking about the title where the glory is um and with him and my friend Andy Cherry we were talking about like what we usually hear when we hear songs called they're talked about glory and just this is where the glory is. it it feel they feel a little more like we're singing about the holiness of the lord and just yeah. but I started like thinking about the song and I'm like actually I feel like the beauty of the Lord and, and the where the glory is and walking with, and being with him is just that every day, like he's with me he, mm. and he's, he's always walking with me. He said he'd never leave us. And, um, and so that's what that song's about. It's just, this is where the glory is. You're the one I'm walking with. And this yeah. is where the glory is. I'm never alone. And, um, and I think all of the songs kind of had, have started to have fed off that. And there's another song, narrow road that it's already out. And um and it talks about the similar thing of just this road with the Lord that's he said it would be narrow and uh it said the journey might be lonely but would never be alone. And that's mm. it's kinda another one of those just like this uh this everyday walk with the Lord and this it feels yeah. like worship songs for like uh this feels like worship songs for the working man, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If that makes that, sense. But yeah, man, that's good. Yeah. Is it's, there it's, Respect. We're gonna have all the multi tracks on Loop Community. Is there a song that you'd be like, yeah. "Hey, worship leader, this is one that you might want to even like consider playing at your church." Like, who, which one do you think is the most oh, yeah. congregational for a church? Oh gosh, um, I mean, I think there's a few of them that are, and uh, one Resurrection Day. Um, I mean, obviously, it's just the Easter Sunday morning yeah. song. But That'd be great. Yeah, we need more of them. It's, and it's upbeat, which is yeah. not normal for me to have an upbeat song. Yeah. that I'm really stoked about leading on Sundays. It's so hard for me to write an upbeat song. Um, but it's upbeat. And it's, you know, it's obviously it's talking about the, the resurrection, but it's not just saying, you know, it's not just that. It's just that this is resurrection day every day that I can yeah. wake up and just, and um, I think that one I'm really excited about leading. It's a great like opener kind of song. Um, there's another song I wrote with my friend Patrick Mayberry uh, yeah. called Still Standing. And he actually sings it with me. But um, I think that one, I think I could see that one being like a good congregational song for people. So, um, yeah, there's a few on there. There's one on it that I think I love the most. It's called Keep Me Burning. And it it was kind of a joke. I was singing uh, this old song I grew up singing when I was a kid. Uh, Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me yeah, oil yeah. in my lamp. I pr- and so we kind of, I started singing that. And they were like, what if we just did like our own you know, slower ballad type version of that song. And so that one, that came out of that. Just give me oil in my land. Give me fire in my bones. And and the chorus is just, Jesus, keep me, keep me burning. It's just this sweet worship song that's just, just a call for like the Lord to just yeah. uh, continue to like keep that fire, keep that flame, that flame, yeah. a flame, that fire, a flame. Fire, a flame. flame. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. you got it. I'm like, what is, I'm, I'm losing my words here. Yeah, but dude, that's awesome, man. Well, we're going to be pushing that uh, project for you. Get, get it in front of worship leaders. Oh. So give us a little bit of a sneak peek behind the curtain, your life in Franklin. What does yeah. a normal week look like for you? Like songwriting oh, or travel, gosh. school drop off? Yeah, right. I'm trying to think what is, what is a normal week anymore? Um, because it's different. Last week I was gone all week in California, so that wasn't normal. But um, yeah. a normal like today, I I took the kids to school this morning. They do we, we homeschool, but they do two days at a co-op, so they do yeah. Monday and Wednesday. So I took the kids to school, and um, I, a lot of you know there's about every other day I might do a write. Uh, you know, I'm not. It depends on if I'm like working on when I was working on my album. I'm writing a lot more and I'm writing for that. If I'm not like right now when it's, the album's done. So a lot of times I'm writing, it's just for other people. Like um, I wrote yesterday and then came home and, you know, 
cooked yep. spaghetti for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, yeah. but today, you know, uh, tomorrow I'm, I'm going and writing with my buddy, David Leonard for his album. Yeah. And just, so, and that's, and that's something that since I moved here to Franklin, it's been fun to be able to have those times of like, yeah, just writing and be for other people. And um, yeah, so, I you know, do that a lot more. I get to do that a ton more. And, um, yeah. And I didn't realize like how much I'd actually love that. And it's just like the, there's less pressure. I feel like I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. well, this isn't for me in the sense that I want to make it great, but yeah. I hold, I hold a little bit looser to it, which ends up making it, I think, I think yeah. easier for me to write because there's yeah. no, you know, yeah. I don't put as much restraints on it and pressure. Yeah. But um, would you say, how yeah. many rights do you think you have a week? No, I'm not like a guy who's like yeah. every day. I like, okay, I, yeah at least one maybe yeah. two okay but yeah. um if i'm not traveling um yeah but yeah that's I'm what not, i would guess is even like sustainable yeah i for me that's not i mean i mean i'm definitely a songwriter but i'm right so much more of like worship leader artist guy that i too much songwriting and it just it wears me out i can't yeah so yeah. um i have I friends that. that write every day and they just love it and that's all they want to yeah. do yeah, I think that would burn me out. <laughs> it would def it definitely burns me out. I can't do it. I've I've found like a good stride. I feel like yeah. I'm in my yeah a, a nice uh, flow right now. Do it. you guys commit when you when you do a write? And the people that you know that like are writing every day are they committing to like finishing the song that day? Because I think what would really hang over me is like if you don't finish the song and then like it just yeah. starts snowballing and you've got a ton of songs that are just like seventy five percent of the way done yeah no that 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 can happen and then you just lose you forget and lose track yeah. of like what song's done and what's yeah um i think most of the time we try to go in and think let's let's try to finish this today or at least enough to where it's like you can voice memo back and forth that last little bit yeah but um most of the time i feel like we get about all of it done at a least full right yeah at least a full right and then you Work a lot table. of times go back and you know you can yeah. pick things apart and change yeah. stuff here and there but yeah so i'm uh I, I told you i was i'm working on this project with mckendry i'm curious from your perspective when you yeah. work on a project what's your favorite part about doing a recording uh and what's your least oh. favorite part of the process oh wow um i mean writing can can be the hardest part for me i think a lot of times uh there's sometimes when I feel like it comes really now, it just kind of depends on the song too. There's some yeah. songs I'm just like, Oh man, that was where the glory is. That song felt easy and just, you know, flowed yeah. right out. We never changed anything about it. The, yeah. even the vocal take that's on the album was the demo take. I yeah. sang it wow. the first time I sang it, it just felt easy. And like, I wow. remember David was like, we can try, you know, later when we record this, we can try to have you sing it. But he's like, I just don't think you're going to do it better than that. That's <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, and so it's amazing. No, not perfect, but perfect for the song. Yeah, for that right, album. right. But um, but I think the most fun part for me is the actual recording and and the process of crafting like the arrangements with the band and all that stuff feels yeah that that because it feels like the pressure. I feel the the most pressure when it comes to writing. Because yep. it's just like you got to get it right. You got once that part's done, yeah. I'm like, wow, the rest of it's just fun. It's like, how are we gonna yeah. arrange this? What's, it, what's this song gonna sound like and feel mm -hmm. like? That part's the fun part to me. But some people love the writing process, and and I don't, I don't dislike it. Obviously, it's who I am. It's what I'm called to do. It just, yeah. um, I don't know. I might, I don't know. I've had some people that are shocked to hear that, like, the writing part comes a little tougher to me and maybe it's not quite as enjoyable as one might think but it just kind of depends on the song too yeah but. yeah right i know some just come easy yeah some come easy i tend to beat my i have a lot of control over the writing part yeah. and i tend to beat myself up a little bit more yeah. with that yeah. in that regard and then when it comes to the producing and recording i know my strengths and weakness in that and most of the time i need to just like let it go yeah. a little bit and so yeah. i i just enjoy that better because I yeah. lean on the other guys more. Yeah. And, yeah. And with the writing, I mean, there's just so many possibilities. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's so many different right. options and like the words that you choose are so important. Someone recently told me that it's like the difference between difference 
the expression is like different of like lightning versus lightning bug. Like those two yeah. things are completely send totally different messages. Yeah. Well, and, and it's that and one tweak. Totally. And I think, I know for me, I'm a, I'm an Enneagram nine. So, uh, more options doesn't usually mean like, it doesn't usually yeah. bring me peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. If I have more decision, like there's more yeah. options and on in decision making, yeah. I am just yeah. like, Oh no. And then I'll just ask a million people like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. And, um, so if it's just, yeah, if it's just like, let's either going to be this or it's either going to be yeah. that, then I'm like, great, let's do this. But yeah. if it, the, uh, yeah, when in the writing, when the songwriting, when it, when it is like an endless possibility, yeah, that almost like, oh gosh, yeah. no, I know <laughs> someone choose for me. Yeah. Right. Someone, choose, which, oh, which I will say coming here to Nashville, I've, I feel like I've grown into songwriting in that I've learned how to get like a theme in a, of a song, like yeah. right out of the gate. And that mm. even that hones it in to where, oh, it's got to fit down this, down these yeah. two parameters because here's the theme. Here's what we're going after. As yeah. opposed to, I feel like, you know, years ago, I would just kind of like, I just want to write a worship song and just make it this broad thing of, yeah, we just want to write a worship song about the Lord. And I'm like, well, yeah, we do. Yeah. But are we going to sing about his faithfulness? Let's sing about his faith or let's sing about how he, you know, his blood or the cross, you know, something when you mm -hmm. hone it in then it's like okay right. then it takes throws away a tons of options that aren't good for this anyway and let's just right. keep it right here so yeah well all right i have one final question for you and i'm gonna let you go <laughs> all if right you could go back and tell a younger version of yourself or maybe a new young worship leader maybe you're sitting down over coffee with a young worship leader who's 15 years old if you could go back and tell yourself something as a young kid what was some advice you'd give for the road ahead wow um, gosh, I will, I will say, I think worship leaders nowadays in some regard have it so much easier than I feel like I did 20 some years ago, <laughs> but then also so much harder. We didn't have social media. Yeah. We didn't have all these different ways to compare yeah. yourself to everyone who does what you do. And, um, I think I would say, and I feel like, I feel like I somewhat did this well, but then also I know how I felt when I, I feel like on the outside, it might look like to some people back then that I was doing this. Okay. But I know how I was feeling and I wasn't, <laughs> um, I would tell most worship leaders to like, Hey, just to go back. Like, what was the last thing the Lord, you felt like the Lord told you like, in whatever mm -hmm. season it, did you like, maybe you're at this church and you feel like I, you see yourself doing something else down the road. And sometimes I know for me, it was hard to like, just be where I was in the moment because I see yeah. all these, these goals and dreams and even like prophetic words and things that people yeah. had told me that I was going to be doing. And I see those so much so that I don't, I forget like where I'm actually planted right here. Yeah. And, um, I had to remind myself and I would tell, I would want to remind a worship leader, a young worship leader, like, Hey, what was the last thing the Lord told you? He put you right here. Like, you just like pour into that with all your heart pastor yeah. that worship team and let the Lord pastor your dreams over here and let him water those. And those will come and happen. That'll happen in time and whatever that means, whether it means like you grow in your team to be a move, you know, and nowadays it's like, it's so every, every worship team wants to be a worship movement. Every worship yeah. movement wants to be a label and every, you know, all this. Yep. Yep. It's like some of that's great, but What's like the, what's the one thing the Lord has put you there and wants to pour into those people and like, don't mm. forget where you are and look yeah. past and try to grab onto something too early because God forbid you get it. And then you got to like, yeah, I remember my pastor, Bill Johnson, he just says, Hey, let the Lord, uh, let the Lord promote you because if we, mm. when we, when we try to promote ourselves and then we have to like keep. Our, yeah. We have to maintain that and keep it up with our own in energy. But if the Lord promotes yeah. you, then he will sustain you. Yeah. And so, yeah. So that's easy a good word. That. That's a good word, man. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us for this. And oh, uh, thanks for having me. I've been dodging the sun the whole time. No, no, good. <laughs> hey, hopefully it feels good though. Yeah. I would I tell love. worship leaders, Hey, don't dodge the sun. Just, just, <laughs> just sit right Embrace there with the it, Lord. Man. You're getting your vitamin D. <laughs> I am. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks so much for joining us. We're looking forward to your album dropping. Oh, very soon. Thanks for having me. Thanks for all yeah, you guys man. do and just how you yep. just help 
churches just yeah yeah worship absolutely honestly. absolutely yeah. man that's what we're about Thank you. all right Thank hope you. to talk to you soon thanks you too